And thanks for joining us here on PM Express. Uh, in the last 24 hours, the news has been dominated by one address, the presidential address, the first since the economic crisis started. And yesterday, the president confirmed that indeed we are in deep economic crisis. He would not underestimate how bad this is. And he went on to say a lot of things, including some interventions to try and stem the bleeding in the interim. Well, tonight you've heard a lot from, you know, I, across the board on reactions to the president. We are going to do a, a special show uh, that looks at it from the political angle, from the economic angle, from the civil society angle. And then at the end of it, the second part, we will have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the information minister who can then address all the key issues emerging from the first part. So we intend for this to be a very comprehensive conversation here on PM Express. So come with me. Let's assume that you still haven't heard what the president had said. So let me quickly run through for you some of the highlights of what he said last night. And I want to start with what many people were looking for to the president agreeing that yes, we are in an economic crisis and that the budget that was planned for this year has completely been, throw, been thrown out of kilter because of the current economic crisis that, that we're in. He talks about that quite emphatically. Now, on the back of that, the president also then indicates what they've been doing. One is the 30% cut in budgeted discretionary expenditure, uh, which means that some of the things that the government will be spending their monies on, 30% of that is off, including cuts in salaries for ministers, MMDs, ZCs, et cetera. We'll be interrogating this a bit more because we've heard this before. This is not new. Uh, and so the key question to ask is, so um, what has become of the cuts and how do we verify same is one of the key things we'll talk about. Then what the president talks about what you see behind me there. Uh, and he then draws essentially on the economic situation elsewhere, comparing ourselves to our neighboring countries. One of the things that you've been talking about is about inflation, how your prices are changing quite rapidly on the markets when you go. You simply cannot afford anymore. Remember, two months ago, we did a special show from the markets here on PMS. So the way I went to the market, did a one hour conversation with a whole host of market women, you know, butchers and, 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 and customers who are coming to the marketplace to buy. And one of the things they were telling us, what I found myself on the ground is that prices were changing quite rapidly. The president says this is not unique to us and that if you go to Togo, inflation had gone up 16 fold. If you go to Senegal, it's gone up 11 fold. If you go to Cote d'Ivoire, uh, seven fold. But I asked my reset decks to do something for me, right? Because when the president talks about this, it doesn't give you the uh, real picture, right? Keeping them honest. Yes, it's true, 16 fold, 11 fold, 7 fold, even though we find that the, the jumps are consistent with the reality on the ground. But the president, let's, let's, let's you know, um, agree that he was right with this. But if you drill down to the specifics, you find that the jumps the president talks about, the increase, the fold increases, doesn't compare at all to what we are witnessing locally. And I want to demonstrate that for you with that graph that you see there on your screen. And I want to highlight uh, for you what, what we are talking about uh, here. Because if you look at Ivory Coast, the president mentions, Ivory Coast inflation it's, has jumped, yes, but it's a 6.3%. That's it here. 6.3%. Togo has gone up, yes, but it's gone up from 0.7% to 7.9%. Yes. If you go to Senegal, yes, it's gone up. It's gone up, right? Yeah, just significantly, but still, it is just from 1.8% to 11.9%. Now let's come to the mother of all inflations, which is Ghana. It is 7.1%, and if you even look at it from the base where it used to be, we are now talking about 37.2%. So there's no way that the comparison compares. There's no way that these countries that the president mentions to make his case that everybody else in the sub-region is feeling infl inflation compares to our reality. If you draw that line, this is a, a cliff in terms of that comparison. So this is just to give you a picture. Whereas the president is true that there's been significant jumps in inflation across the sub-region, if you drill down to the specifics, you begin to see that ours is a complete outlier, right? And that's the question that many have been asking. Now, why is it that all these countries are facing the same challenges the president talks about yesterday? They face the pandemic, they're facing Ukraine. 
And how come ours is 37.2% and theirs, the highest you've seen in Senegal is 11.9%. Somebody needs to explain that. We'll go into that pretty shortly. Now also, the fuel price hikes is a key thing. Tonight, the, uh, the oil marketing companies, they are confirming to us that from tomorrow morning, you should expect to buy the cheapest petrol will cost you 17 CD a litre from tomorrow. In fact, if you check around, some of the stations have already be begun selling this as of tonight. Now, so clearly the president yesterday when he spoke was mindful of that challenge. And so he announced that, and this for me is very central to the conversation we're gonna to have tonight. Because if the president pulls this off, it's gonna be one of the biggest miracles for us. And it will be good miracle. Because they say they're gonna to work to secure reliable, like this. And then the most important one is affordable petroleum products for the Ghanaian markets. How is the government going to do this in this global economy where we know international crude oil prices we know have gone up? And if you watch and listen to the international uh, markets, Shell and Co are announcing big, big uh, profits, billions and billions in Nexus. Why? Because crude oil prices. So where, where is the government going to get affordable petroleum products from? unreliable and we wish they can do this but we need to ask hard questions that is our job and that's what we'll do tonight when information minister joins us we want to believe our government and that's why we need to hold their feet to the fire break it down for us and then the key question about debt also emerged last night because as we see on the screen here one of the biggest announcements i must say is this announcement but there that there will be no haircut and this First emerged because Bloomberg on the 20th of September did a story that really sent, sh you know, shockwaves across the markets that government was intending to do a restructuring that will include haircuts on principals. And this was the 20th of September. Three days later, Fitch then did a downgrade of our debt and Fitch referenced the Bloomberg story, the press reports, and said government had failed to clarify confirm or deny and so they, they factored that in into a downgrade so the president yesterday said forget there's not going to be a haircut but let's see if the reality backs that story the president had said because if you look at it our debt currently in dollar terms stands at 53.2 billion and if you break that down you get uh, external debt of 28 billion and then domestic of 25 billion and total, it's, if you look at the percentage-wise, the external debt is 52.6%, the domestic is 47.4%. Question is, is this unsustainable? Yes, if you ask the bank of the World Bank, the World Bank will tell you this is currently unsustainable. In their uh, report that was released just this month, they talk about the fact that we are now high distress and they are predicting our debt to go over 100% to GDP by the end of the year. So clearly we are, we are, we are that debt is, is not sustainable. But listen to what the IMF says. When a country's debt is unsustainable, but is seeking a bailout. And, and for me, this is, this is key because it tells us what we can expect. This is the IMF. And this is the IMF Q&A on Ghana. And I want to quote. In cases where a country's debt is assessed as unsustainable, the IMF is precluded from providing financing. But this is key. Unless... The member takes steps to restore debt sustainability, including seeking a debt restructuring from its creditors. So if you just oppose this with the president saying there's not going to be a haircut when your debt is unsustainable, somebody must explain and reconcile the IMF position, the World Bank's conclusion that our debt is unsustainable, and the president's assertion last night that there's not going to be a haircut. Well, does a haircut necessarily mean restructuring? are both the same. We'll get some clarity on that when we sit down. And so, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to be joined by a few people. We're going to be joined by uh, the Vice President of Imani, um, who's going to be first, indeed, speaking to us on his assessment of what the President had said. That is Bright Simmons, who's joining us via Zoom. And then we'll also have in the studio uh, Dr. Kojo Asante. And Kojo Asante was at the press conference, one of the voices from the citizens, uh, the, the coalition of citizens who came together, uh, civil society groups, you know, voicing a lot of issues. And they had so many 
you know, issues that they were expecting that the president, at least the government, would tackle as part of dealing with the economic crisis. I wonder if they found any in what the president announced yesterday. Of course, a man who was there when Ghana went through a crisis in 2013, 2014, 2015, Deputy Finance Minister then, uh, Casey Latoforsi, is also with me in the studio. That's the first part. And then the second part, Kojo Ponkrumah, having listened to all the assessments coming through, will also join us here in the studio for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I get to put to him everything else that you hear in the analysis in the next few minutes. So stay with me. After the break, we'll get into the details.